Hello and welcome. You're watching NDTV 24/7. I'm Asama Shah. Shifali Jariwala, the beloved icon of the early 2000s music video era and a vibrant TV personality, she died unexpectedly at the age of 42. While cardiac arrest is being suspected as one of the causes, authorities are still awaiting the post-mortem results and assessing other possible factors, including the potential role of epilepsy. Her untimely departure it has deeply impacted the fans. her colleagues and the entire entertainment world her death has led to speculation as well over the probable causes behind her death a reported uh, ongoing treatments and medical history is also being discussed as the police are yet to reveal the cause of the death shifali jariwala's untimely death it has raised a lot of questions was it because of the anti aging therapy that she was uh, taking was it because of her epilepsy that she had suffered from the age of 15 uh we'll try and find answers to some of those questions i am currently joined uh, by dr samir gupta senior interventional cardiologist and director metro group of hospitals dr samir gupta uh you know coming to you first is there any sort of any sort of relation uh, between uh, the kind of treatment that she was taking uh, she was also suffering from epilepsy was that also one of the reasons what do you make of it uh, what is your assessment yeah uh, thank you sama um, you know uh, first thing we have to understand is that when anybody dies right anybody dies uh, whether it's because of epilepsy because of a heart attack of malignancy kidney problem whatever the cause of death is in the end it's a cardiac arrest that happens right your heart stops functioning and then and that is when you are uh, pronounced dead, dead right so now a cardiac arrest can happen because of many many reasons many reasons heart attack being one of them whether it's epilepsy there are some conditions and my uh, uh, the other panelist over here can discuss about that it's called sudep uh, he can talk about that uh, it can happen because of uh, electrolyte abnormalities it can happen because of heart attack it can happen because of a reaction to a medicine so there are many different reasons why somebody can have a heart attack and uh, regarding your question about the these extra therapies that she was taking um it's difficult to uh, to talk about it if you don't have all the information right if you if, if that's all hypothetical and conjecture that you know is it because of x y and z um i think what is going to be very important in uh, putting some light on the cause of death is going to be the autopsy and uh, that is when we will really find out what was the exact reason for the cardiac arrest was it a heart issue was it a brain issue or was it something else that was going on that was undiagnosed absolutely and uh, as you mentioned uh, we are still awaiting the post mortem results uh, and uh, until and unless that report is out we cannot uh, certainly say what exactly caused her death and uh, this is a matter of speculation and we have been maintaining this uh, here on ndtv but what uh, you know what we have also understood at this point of time is that uh, it could have been a, a case of sudden cardiac arrest what i want to understand uh, from uh, you dr samir is uh, do you feel that uh, when you speak about an anti aging therapy etc uh, we have tried and understand this we have uh, you know tried to learn about it uh, but uh, nowhere did we find that uh, it is related to uh, people dying with cardiac arrest do you think it is related uh, in some manner especially when you look at the surgical part of it you know so um usually uh, these anti aging therapies should not have a systemic interaction especially the ones that you mentioned are all topicals so that topical means is just put on the skin and usually the systemic absorption into the blood is very less Uh, it usually should not have that uh, there can be an occasional random case uh, maybe uh, there can always be a one in a million case and that's not for me to speculate on um, and regarding the surgeries or all the face lift brow lift eyelid surgeries that you mentioned over here um, these surgeries are usually done in a in a proper um, uh, doctor's office and i'm sure that um she would have had this done at proper places regulated places at accredited places and not just a random you know uh, a random place um usually uh, when you have these surgeries that you get anesthesia uh, it could be local anesthesia which is just uh, lidocaine over here or it could be uh, general anesthesia depending upon the type of surgery and during the perioperative period um there can be some some bad things that can happen but that incidence is also very low um so you know i'm i'm not sure if these anti aging therapies are completely related 
to this. Uh, it could be just um, a random association, but I'm not sure if that if we can say it's causation that this is the that this anti aging therapy caused a cardiac arrest. Uh, Dr. Samir, uh, are there any known interactions between anti epileptic medication and supplements or drugs that are often used in anti aging regimes? Uh, I'm talking about uh, you know growth hormones uh, stimulants as well. Do you feel uh, that is uh, there is any known interaction between the two? So uh, I'm not sure about uh, the interaction of growth hormone with anti-epilepsy drugs, but growth hormone supplementation uh, when you become an adult can increase the risk of atherosclerosis, which is blockage in the arteries of your heart, and that can subsequently cause uh, heart problems. Uh, in fact, uh, many times you see uh, a lot of the bodybuilders and wrestlers, uh, mm. they are taking supplemental steroids. And that can also have a negative impact on your health. Even though you may build some muscle temporarily, it can increase and accelerate the process of uh, atherosclerosis. It can increase the risk of hypertension, of mood disorders. And that can, again, have a detrimental effect on the heart and cause cardiac arrest and other problems. Dr. Samir, uh, you know, there is, uh, there is a big worry about how young people, uh, fit people, uh, they are dying of cardiac arrest. And we have seen so many examples in the last couple of years. Uh, many celebrities who take care of their bodies, who take care of their health, they have an entire team of nutritionists uh, with them who take care of the food that they eat. And yet you see cases where these people are dying of cardiac arrest, sudden cardiac arrest. Do you feel there is a pattern? Do you think it is about lifestyle? What are, what are the primary reasons that you can think uh, is causing this? Yeah, so I think it's important to understand what are the different causes. So we've already discussed that cardiac arrest can be because of many reasons, yeah. one of which is a heart attack. Now, if we have to talk about a heart attack, let's try and understand what are the causes of a heart attack? What are the risk factors that lead to a heart attack? And there are usually uh, some common risk factors, which is high blood pressure, which is called hypertension high sugar, which is called diabetes. You can, uh, cigarette smoking is a very big risk factor. A family history of heart problems. You know, if your father, grandfather, mother, uh, a first degree relative has had a heart disease at a young age, then you, by nature of the genetics, are at a higher uh, risk of having heart problems. High amount of stress can cause heart problems. Um, there are well-known conditions uh, that, that, that show this. And even high cholesterol can cause heart problems. Lack of sleep can cause heart problems. So there are many different reasons that can sometimes come together or even in isolation lead to an acceleration of the process of blockage formation that can lead to heart problems. Now, we uh, during the time, uh, there are also some um, inflammatory conditions like uh, rheumatoid arthritis, SLE, uh, which are autoimmune conditions that can also increase the risk of heart problems. Now, um, you know, these, these people, for the most part, are fit. Like you said, they've got nutritionists, they've got health coaches. Uh, but, you know, we also have to understand that were these people taking supplemental medicines um, to, to look that good, to, to, you know, like you mentioned, growth hormone and, you know, testosterone. Were these people taking some of those medicines? And, you know, with heart, it's important to remember that supposing you have a heart attack at the age of 42, it is not something that, you know, if you've been fit for the last two years, you don't get a green shirt and you, you, you are off. Um, you know, heart disease is a slow and these things are slow and gradual processes for the mm. most part. So slowly and steadily, you know, blockages happen, the heart gets stressed, something else happens, the heart gets stressed a little bit more. So that's why it's a life, it's a lifelong um, health regime that usually you have to live and not something that, you know, now I've taken care of myself, so I'm off the hook. Yeah, yeah, that's a great point that you have uh, made, uh, Dr. Samir Gupta. Dr. Samir, uh, what would you want to say to the young people who are watching this? You know, I, I would try to echo uh, the sentiments of uh, Dr. Gupta as well, that, you know, it's that, that lifestyle, there is no magic potion, right? I mean, you can have as many pills as you want. You can do whatever, you know, you can, you know, there, there is no magic potion. You have to live healthy. You have to be healthy. You have to exercise. You have to just take care of your overall self. And it's very important that, you know, that people get themselves tested for high blood pressure, high cholesterol, diabetes, some of these risk factors. Uh, oftentimes, I get people who are fairly young. You know, I get people in their 20s and 30s with high blood pressure. And I tell them that, you know, you need to be on medicine because your numbers are really high. And they take it very casually. 
you're like no no doc i'm just in my 20s how can i start taking medicine but if you have a if you have a problem then it is important you address that problem so when you are in your 40s when you're in your 50s when you're in your late 30s um you know the the compounding effect of years of uh, ignoring uh, some of these illnesses uh, doesn't lead to problems so it's important to get yourself tested just live healthy be healthy eat right and exercise now those are some of the simple things that you can do uh dr samir gupta thank you very much for uh, speaking with ndtv and uh, making sense of uh, all those things that we spoke about we talked about and uh, i genuinely hope that uh, everyone especially the young people who are watching the show right now who are listening to you guys they implement all of that that you have mentioned 